When you think of Thomas the Tank Engine, probably the first thing that comes to your head is the original 80s and 90s run. That timeless classic that encapsulates everything amazing about childhood innocence, but at the same time delivers riveting storytelling, compelling characters, and rich thematic moments that stick with you for years on end. Now, if you were a casual viewer of Thomas when you were a kid, you would almost definitely assume that the show became bad when they stopped using the models. And that so-called fantastic show that you once held so dear was butchered after season 11. Yeah, that's not entirely the case. It's common knowledge that the show took a dip in quality after season 5. It did fluctuate every now and again, I personally think that season 7 is far better than season 6, but I mean, I don't know. Long story short, season 8 to 11 was ass. Was there a good episode or two every season? Yeah, sure, but that's still 2 out of 26. And there's no other season that gets everything so incomprehensibly wrong than season 12. Season 12 at face value is just a glorified VFX test. It's evidently clear that most of the budget went into the CGI because while watching it, it feels as if that's the only priority they had while making this season. I'm going to be dividing this video into sections where I discuss each of its issues one by one. And trust me, there are a lot of issues. Number 1. Terrible production value. By far the most disappointing part of season 12 is its visuals. The hit era is notorious for its poor visual quality, whether it be the washed out colours in season 8 through 10, or the Mexico breaking bad lighting for season 11. But this season simply fells at being immersive to me. Take a very stock standard shot from say, season 2, and then just compare it to season 12. Now, there is of course one or two pieces of neat visuals here and there. The sunsets admittedly are nice, but that's always been hit strong point, so it's not something exclusively good to season 12. And of course, the aspect of season 12 that everyone clowns on is the set design. What the actual fuck was the thought process of this? This looks like a six year old's Tomy layout. Like, what happened here? It is so apparent that they were running out of budget for this season, it's actually kind of hilarious. Something else that really irks me while watching this season is the really poor narration from Brandon and Angelus. Now, I don't blame them for this, because there is a genuine reason as to why they sound so off in this season. So, as I'm sure a lot of you know, Pierce Brosnan was originally supposed to narrate Thomas for a few years after The Great Discovery. It was believed for a while that he had only narrated The Great Discovery. This conclusion was drawn due to him being labelled as a guest narrator on The Great Discovery DVDs. However, he actually recorded all of season 12, most likely around the same time as The Great Discovery. Now, you might be wondering, how is this relevant in any way? Well, it's pretty simple. The mouth movements of the engines were animated to Pierce Brosnan's narration. This was most likely the plan all along, as it would have been a lot cheaper to do this than having to animate the lip-syncing to Brandon's dub in the US, as well as Angelus's in the UK. After Brosnan had left though, there was not only a limited amount of time left to have season 12 meet its release deadline, but they were also left with no narrators for the UK or US dubs. And so what I think happened was that they scrambled to get Brandon and Angelus back, and had them not only rush generation, but they also had to make the two of them sync their own voices to the pre-animated lip syncs. This is why a lot of lines in season 12 sound like this. I never get lost. I know the railway better than any other engine. I'm sorry, but I don't have time to help you. I have to collect the fireman. He's a hero. In regards to this season looking like ass, there's also a lot of moments that simply just look bad. Here are a few screen grabs to illustrate my point. Number 2. The Three Strikes Formula Yes, I know this isn't something exclusive to season 12, but it's still a bad aspect of the season. I know this goes without saying, but the Three Strikes Formula destroys every single character it touches. It's one of the most infuriating tropes I have ever seen, and the fact that every single episode utilises this just goes to show that there was absolutely no thought or care put into the scripts. I think this season also starts the trend of making the characters even dumber than they were in the previous one. Like, the Rosie's Carnival special episode is utterly laughable. You're trying to tell me that Rosie wouldn't know that Emily is already coupled up to the train, even though they were both given the same job. And don't even get me started on Don't Go Back. That episode is genuinely one of the worst in the entire series. I'm not even joking. However, season 12's undeniable biggest issue, the aspect of the season that completely fucks over the entire pacing of all episodes and any pieces of dialogue is this. A clashing of styles. What I mean by this is the CGI series and the model series both had their own very distinct ways of conveying dialogue. In the model series, the entire episode would be narrated by one guy. Every engine would be voiced by them and the exposition dumps and storytelling as a whole was done by them. The narrator also added what I like to call clarification lines like this that convey the dialogue in a very engaging manner. Take this scene, for example, from Henry's Forest. 
Look, Henry, called Terence. We're beginning again. The hillside will look better than ever before. You'll see. That little called Terence not only clarifies for us who's talking, helping out not only children to understand, but also aiding general audiences to tell you who this guy is. It also serves as a way to make the dialogue feel a lot more natural. Imagine the dialogue in the classic series without those said blanks. I'm too old to pull important trains. I'm in disgrace. He'll choose me, of course. You? You can't climb hills. As you can see, it doesn't fit very well at all. Now let's take a look at the CGI series. Since the show is fully animated now and not static faces where you wouldn't always be able to tell who's talking, it's always very clear which engine is talking. The individual character voices of course help too. Now imagine if I added some really unnecessary narration from Mark Morahan to a scene from this episode. That's what silly little tank engines are for. Silly little tank engines? Wish Thomas. Well, maybe this silly little tank engine should take the express today. Bye Gordon! Replied mm. Thomas cheekily. Thomas? What are you doing? Once again, it completely messes up the pacing of the scene. And what season 12 does is that it meets at a really awkward midway point between the two. Those clarification lines are now gone, and the engines now have moving faces and mouths. But they're all still voiced by the same person. They also still keep those lines when the narrator tells us how our characters are feeling after another character says something to them. And it's because the faces are now animated, that those moments where the narrator is telling us Percy felt bad or Thomas felt sad, you just have them sitting there like fucking NPCs, waiting for the narrator to stop talking. It completely destroys the pacing of all scenes for me, I hate it so much. This may not be an issue for everyone, but for me this simply reinforces my point that season 12 is an inherently broken series. And that while having a transition season to ease audiences into the CGI series is a good idea and concept, it ultimately falls flat because, like many people have said before, part of Thomas's appeal was how charming it was and in the way it was presented. It felt sincere, it felt like it was someone telling a story to a child in bed. But with series 12, it's just that really, really awkward middle ground. The CGI series, season 17 to 21 at least, was great at telling its stories because it did its own thing. It stayed true to the original series, but also told stories in an engaging way that felt unique to its era. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was actually not technically about season 12, but it's a theory I have regarding it and Hero of the Rails. So for those of you who don't know, Hero of the Rails was originally going to be in the same style as season 12. This is made very apparent by the marketing. Many people's main issue with the movie is that there is a lot of fluff in regards to the narration. My absolute biggest gripe with the movie is that the narrator never shuts up. Now, analyzing Hero of the Rose's script, something hit me. Hero of the Rose's dialogue is written in the exact same way as season 12. And I think the only reason why it's an issue in Hero of the Rose is because all of the engines have individual voices, and to have Angelus and Bradlin keep intercutting scenes with pointless exposition, which we can clearly see on screen. You want to know what that reminds me of? Hello, Thomas. Percy saw that Thomas was collecting the brass band. He was very upset. It's with this knowledge that I have this theory. I think that the decision to make Hero of the Rose a fully CGI production was done at a much later date than we think. Not only is this supported by the fact that this logo made it onto some of the products, but I think that because they made the decision to make it fully CGI so late in the game, that they didn't have enough time to reformat the script into the writing style that it should have had. Now of course, this could be me just overthinking things, because the narrator speaking way too much isn't an issue with just Hero of the Rails, it's an issue that plagued the franchise until about season 17. But maybe they just stuck to that writing style because it was easier to pad out the runtime with meaningless fluff? I don't know, it's not an entirely plausible theory, but I think it's interesting. Long story short though, season 12 just simply doesn't work for me. It's got some of the worst visuals in the entire franchise, up there with Big World, it's got the Three Strikes formula coursing through its veins, and its dialogue is paced horrendously. Easily one of the worst Thomas seasons we've ever gotten. It's down there with season 23 and 15 for me. Utter trash.